YouTube. Today is Friday, March 15th, and today I am in New York City. What I wanted to do today is just a little bit of a review between the Fuji 23mm f1.4 lens and the Fuji 35mm f2 lens. It's one of the most commonly asked questions that I get on YouTube, on Instagram, on whatever, is which lens should I get? Like if you had the choice between the 23 or the 35mm f2 lens and you could only have one of them, what is the one lens that you would choose? Is pretty much what I get asked on a weekly basis from somebody on YouTube or on Instagram. And so I wanna go over that, kinda of talk a little bit about it, give you some sample images, and just shoot with both of those lenses today. In the last photo vlog that I made, I was complaining a little bit about the snow and talking about how I wanted it to warm up, and my wishes got answered this week. It's actually 72 degrees outside right now, which is insane. I was walking around earlier in just a t-shirt and sweatpants and it's just ridiculously warm. So I'm super pumped. We're gonna get out there and get some shooting in for sure today. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be shooting with both the 23 millimeter lens as well as the 35 millimeter lens. This lens right here has been my go-to for the past couple of months. I absolutely love this lens, but this wasn't always my go-to. I used to hate this focal length and never use it. And the focal length that I would use instead is this one right here, the 23 millimeter f1.4. First lens we're gonna shoot with today is the 23 millimeter f1.4. Without any further ado, let's get out there and let's start enjoying this warm weather. Right now, making my way up to the Times Square area. Like I said earlier, I have to shoot with the 23 and the 35 millimeter, so I'm not gonna have a ton of time to spend with either of those lenses, probably like 20 or 30 minutes with each lens. So I'm gonna get my GoPro, throw it on the top of my camera right now, get some shots, and see what we can come up with. Let's do it. hotel room. It was way too chaotic and way too loud in Times Square for me to talk to the camera, but I think I got some solid photos that will give us the ability to compare the 23 millimeter with the 35 millimeter. You've already seen some of the photos that I took, but there's still a couple more photos that I didn't get GoPro footage of, so you haven't seen them yet. So what I want to do is pack up my bags, get on the train, head back to Boston, and show you the rest of what I've got. We are finally back in Boston. It was a super solid week in New York. I actually ended up with like three or four shots that were solid keepers, which is unusual. I'm usually happy if I leave a trip with like one, maybe two shots that are solid keepers. You've already seen the majority of those shots, but I'll show you the last couple of them right now. The first shot I wanna show you guys is this one right here that I shot with the 23 millimeter. It's an awesome city skyline shot. The way that the light was reflecting off the buildings was awesome that night and the sunset just overall looked great. The second one is also a city skyline shot, but instead of just being the skyline, 
it's actually a city bike with the skyline blurred out behind it. I really like how the colors in this one came out again too. These were both on the same night. I kind of edited them a little bit differently from one another, but I really like how both of them came out. My absolute favorite photo of the week, however, was this one that you already saw. It's this taxi with the light up American flag behind it and the person walking by at the same time. This is one of those shots that just took a lot of different factors to go perfectly right in order for me to execute on it. I needed to have a taxi pull up in the exact spot that I wanted it to be in, and simultaneously I had to have somebody walking through the frame while I was standing in the middle of the road just trying to stay out of people's way and trying to make sure that nobody got in my way as I was taking the shot. Now this type of photo is my absolute favorite because it takes timing, patience, and sort of a willingness to get uncomfortable in order to execute on this shot. I need to be super patient and wait for the perfect time to get the shot, but I also had to stand in the middle of the road trying to stay out of everybody's way in order to make it happen. I think it's an awesome shot. I really like how it came out and I'm really happy that I was able to get that one. Now let's talk about these lenses. I don't wanna spend a ton of time on specs, but just really quick, we'll go over it. So first off, one of the biggest differences is that the 35 millimeter is weather sealed, while the 23 millimeter is not. Second off, the 23 millimeter, this 1.4 version especially, is a little bit better in low light performance, whereas the 35 millimeter is just a little bit slower, the aperture is a little bit tighter, but they're both still really, really good in low light. Third, the price is a big differentiating factor. I think that brand new, I buy all my lenses used, but this one brand new, I think it's like eight or 900 bucks, whereas this one's only like 350 or something like that. So this is almost three times as expensive. And then when it comes down to size, you can see that the 23 millimeter is a hell of a lot bigger than the 35 millimeter. They do make a 23 millimeter F2 version that is quite a bit smaller than the F1.4 version, and it is also a heck of a lot cheaper as well. I don't really wanna compare the lenses specifically today because I know that Fuji makes different variations of each focal length. They have the 35 F2 and the F1.4, and they also make the 23 F2 and the F1.4. So we're not gonna talk specifically about the lenses really, but just about the focal lengths themselves. So the great thing about the 23 millimeter focal length is that since it's a little bit wider, it makes it a lot easier for you to get a little bit more of your environment into the photo. Instead of narrowing right in on your subject, you're able to give your viewers a little bit more context in terms of where you are, where you're taking the photo, and what the environment looks like. I'll show you a couple more examples of what I've taken with that focal length right here. The 35 millimeter, on the other hand, because of its tighter angle of view and because it's a little bit more zoomed in, it gives you the ability to really hone in and focus on a particular subject in the frame. I really like this because it gives me the ability to kind of control where the viewer's eye is going to go. So I'll show you a couple more examples of what I've shot with that focal length right here. So I personally prefer the 35 millimeter focal length over the 23 millimeter focal length. It gives me the ability to remove some of those environmental distractions and really hone the viewer's eye in on exactly what I want them to focus on. I've taken some of my favorite photos that I've ever taken with the 35 millimeter focal length. Even though I much prefer the 35 millimeter over the 23 millimeter for my own work, if I was to recommend to you to get one lens, if you could only choose one of the two, I would probably recommend you to get the 23 instead of the 35. Whether you get the 23 1.4 like I have or the cheaper 23 millimeter F2, it's just a much more versatile lens. Even though I don't personally prefer it as much, the 23 millimeter is just a heck of a lot more versatile because you can shoot your wide-ish cityscapes but you can also get up close and shoot a portrait and have a nice blurry background if you want. On the other hand, the 35 millimeter is just a little bit too tight for things like cityscapes and landscapes and things of that nature in most cases. At the end of the day, the decision is totally up to you. If you're a person that shoots a ton of portraits and really likes to isolate your subject, the 35 millimeter might just be the perfect lens for you. On the other hand, if you shoot a bit of a mix between cityscapes, landscapes, and also some environmental portraits, the 23 millimeter is probably gonna be a little bit more versatile and better of a lens for you. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope I gave you a little bit of insight in terms of which focal length might be ideal for you. If you liked the video and you aren't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button below. I release new videos every single week 
all about photography. Also, if you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps out the channel a ton. Anyways, thank you all a ton for watching, and I'll see you next week. Peace.